pre, let me, ventral medial pre, that's a part, ventral medial prefrontal cortex, and they had damage to it. And guess what? They did this experiment on them. And guess what, y'all? Tell y'all what happened right here. When they told people what they were drinking, the coke people it got indignant. <laughs> indignant right away. I'm gonna argue, go argue the people down. I know I prefer coke. My mama drank coke. <laughs> My daddy drank coke, and I'm a coke drinker for life. It's proven. <laughs> I can prove it. Look how much coke we have left, and they gonna die and go black now. Somebody went and got the last glass while I was talking. <laughs> medial prefrontal cortex, when they found out, do you know what they said? This is earth shadow. Hang on every word. They said, Pepsi actually tastes better than Coke. I think I'm going to go with Pepsi from now on. Mm -hmm. Now, interesting, their ventral prefrontal cortex was damaged. The people who insisted had healthy healthy parts of the brain. So I'm asking you right now, my Coke drinkers, Jesse, you had Coke? No. <laughs> Who had Coke? Somebody had Coke. <laughs> you? Emily. Emily, you had Coke tonight? Mm -hmm. Emily, why did you pass, why did you pass this when it was so much more of it? Why did you pass this? Uh, Why'd you pass it up, Emily? <laughs> well, Coke and Pepsi is kind of like an interesting thing in my family. So when you say the whole mom, dad thing, like my dad has been a super adamant Coke fan, fights family members over it. See? We do a Christmas <laughs> thing, decoration <laughs> thing about it. Are you serious? Are you serious? Into it, but it's it's such, serious right? I would never drink Pepsi because my dad, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I got the Pepsi, popped it, poured my thing, and kicked back and said, yeah, baby. <laughs> you you <laughs> know what else happened? I've been drinking, I drink Pepsi. It's funny because when I drink soda, I prefer Pepsi too. Who is enough? Now, somebody more than Charlotte, Emily had Charlotte. Coke. Charlotte, did you drink up all the dogs? Come on, Blast. Why don't you? Charlotte, what, is, what inspired you to move when you have a full thing of sweet to sweet? Well, I like that. She's she's right. It is subliminal. I mean, well, in essence, brand appreciation. You have a strong, and your dad's a perfect example. It's a great story. Brand appreciation. Her father, now here's what's interesting. If your dad damaged his prefrontal cortex in that area, he wouldn't care anymore. Isn't that interesting? Isn't that interesting? Now, friends, understand what we're doing here. We're only talking about Pepsi and Coca-Cola. But what about in your life? What about in your life? What about some of the decisions that you're making right now? And you think you know why you're making those decisions? I question and I ask you, do you really know why you're making those decisions? Are you sus? Is it a little suspect now? Is some of your decisions a little bit suspect? Are we willing to question just maybe one or two of them? 95% <laughs> of your day, now an MRI will show up to 12 seconds before you make a conscious decision, it's already been made for you. So out of 100 things that you do on the day, 95 of them are already made before you consciously decided. And the reality is this, you don't get to know your subconscious doesn't always trigger you. You won't know. You, it has to reach a threshold of consciousness before you even know it. For example, we're sitting here focusing on the lecture, and two people over here in the corner have an argument. And let's say that they have the quiet argument. Let's say Gary and Brenda fight over where to spend a gift card. <laughs> and she may say something, and he may try to tease her and say, I'm going to take you to a movie later. You know, let's just. You over here minding your own business. Julie talking to her friend, they mind their own business. They in their own conversation. Your subconscious is picking up everything in the room. So when
when they leave, maybe an hour later, Julie says, you know what, I would really love to go to the movies. Now, Julie's going to think, oh, that's a, that's a good idea. I just came up with that. But did she come up with it on her own? Mm -hmm. Do you know how much you're picking up? every day, all day long, that's influencing you to make decisions, and you think you don't know it? Isn't that interesting? So, when you're little, from two to eight, really from birth, birth to eight years old, all the things, by the way, most people never come out of subconscious programming from development. So, adults are operating on programming from when they were children, up to eight years old. How many decisions do you make in a day that are made for you based upon when you were programmed at this age? Mm -hmm. What did your parents think? What did your parents feel about certain things? What did you pick up on? Remember, children up until age five are in delta, brain waves, complete programming. Children are being completely programmed. Do you have a child right now? They're being completely programmed, 100%. They're in delta almost all day long. They will operate on those programs for the rest of their life unless they consciously change them. And then at 40, you'll say, well, God, I really wish I could get a handle on this. I really wish I could create some healthy relationships. I really wish I could create some abundance. I really wish I could create, like why? Like why can't I, what's happening here? You see, your power center, the power is in the subconscious mind, the conscious has the will. And it's interesting because the conscious impresses upon the subconscious but then it's interesting, the subconscious influences the conscious once it's programmed. So it's a give and a take. You see? It's a cycle. Isn't that interesting? Anybody have any questions so far?